<laughs> Welcome back. I'm Michael. You are listening to The Michael Dresser Show. Let me get this down. We got it. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to talk about something that most people are frightened to death of. Uh, Sh- uh, Sandra Champlain with us. She is the author of We Don't Die. That's a skeptic's discovery of life after death. She's a self-described lifelong skeptic. Sandra started exploring the truth about life, death, grief, and life after death 15 years ago. She's now a highly respected speaker, an author, an entrepreneur, committed to making a difference in the lives of others. Again, she's the author of We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Sandra, hi, welcome to the show. Oh, Michael, thank you for having me. Thanks for the great introduction. Oh, and thank you so much for being here. You know, when we talk about dying, you know, there, there's a physical death and there is also a, an emotional death. And there are so many people who have that emotional death. Somebody dies and a part of them dies also. And for some reason, they don't know, they don't have the wherewithal to recapture. Right. Where was this the for you? Very. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. Very painful process when we lose a loved one. What was your question? Oh, I was going to say, where did this start for you? Well, it started for me back 15 years ago. I don't really have the tipping point that occurred, but I woke up one day afraid of dying. I had a lot of change going on in my life. New job. Uh, my grandfather had passed away. I'd lost pets. And all of a sudden, it's like, who am I? What is my life for? What happens after we die? Um, and it was a really profound fear that I just couldn't live with. Sure. And it had me start researching, is there any credible proof of life after death? And you and I don't know each other, but I was someone who would badmouth and laugh at anybody who believed in mediums, psychics, the occult, getting their cards done, that whole world. Yeah. And I grew up a good Catholic girl, but in my own religion, there was faith, which is wonderful, but I wanted the proof. Yeah. So I just set out on a journey. Is there anything? Yeah, very interesting point. Uh, th- this, uh, oh, gee, I was, I was, what, 20 some odd years old. I'm laying on the beach in Southern California. Gorgeous night, absolutely beautiful night. And there was a million, mm-hmm. 10 million stars out there. And so I'm laying there and I'm looking up at the stars and I started to think, I did just what you did. I started to think, yeah. what, what, what's beyond that? And how can there be anything right. beyond that? Where does it end? How can it end? And I guess, who am I? Yeah, I scared myself. And, and I thought uh, it would it led me to this, is how do you define the undefinable? Because that's what it is. And, and then, I, then I also moved it to God. You know, if somebody can define God, I wonder if they really know what they're talking about because mm-hmm. you can only give it from your definition from a linear point of view. And if right. you can define, uh, you know, that somebody will say God hates God, this, that, and whatever. But those are all human emotions. And that's not what a supreme being has. And so along those lines, I got to that point where I realized that you don't define it. You, 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 you'll have a knowing, but you don't define it. Because the moment you define it, you know you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> and I'll give you a quick, but, a, a quick example of this, yeah. and then uh, there's a lot to talk about. But I, sure. I, had a, um, I, I lost two of my dogs. Uh, oh, it's, gee, it's going on almost a year ago now. It's just that I had them for over 10 years, and they were very special to me. One yeah, went uh, five, six weeks after the other one did. Oh, and <clears throat> so I'm, my sister lives with me, and she has her dog here. And I, I, I was thinking about, you know, I guess you guys will never be gone. And her dog got up, walked over to me, laid his head on my leg, just like my little girl dog did, looked at me oh. and got up and walked away. So tell me there's not something out there. You know, it's funny. I know we're talking about my book, but just this morning I finished a book called Bill and the Rainbow Bridge, and it's about a a bulldog who had passed. And I don't know if you've heard the story of the Rainbow Bridge, but it's the place that our pets go after they pass, and they're playing and running and beautiful temperature and all the food and fun they can have until that moment comes that we, it's our turn, and then we're reunited again. And it was was just a profound story that helps with grief because pet loss, and we love our pets just as much, if not more, than They're we kids. love some human beings. Sure. No, it's the same, same. It's a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, when you really come down to it, love is love, and you can't really define, love. you know, the, no. the, the differences in, in what it is. When you experience that something within you, that's something that we were born with. And everybody has it, but I think the biggest problem with most people is they buried it because they're afraid if it comes out again, they're going to get hurt by something or someone. Right. So we bury it. They don't take things. the risk. Absolutely. Now, you started, you know, okay, what was your next step? How did you, how did you get to that point 
where you began to realize that there is, whatever life is, however you define that, there was something after death. Well, it's funny because I went very undercover because, like I said, I was a loudmouth that I don't believe in life after death. I don't believe in psychics and mediums. And I saw a medium do a stage show. And I'm looking because she's really accurate telling people their deceased loved ones. So naturally I thought these were plants in the audience. There was going to be some hard sell coming. Sure. And there wasn't. So very discreetly, I looked up this medium, a world-famous woman named Doreen Virtue, and she offered a course in mediumship. By the end of three days, you will be someone who can accurately tell the deceased people around others. And so one part of my brain is saying, that's crazy. There's no way anybody can prove that. But then the fear part of me, that part of me that just really wanted to know, decided to pay the money I didn't have, charge my credit card, fly to Laguna Beach, for three days. And the point occurred when, at the very beginning, she said, I'm going to teach you how medium readings are done. We're not really going to do it, but we're going to just do a, like, role playing. So she says, everybody grab a partner, close your eyes, somebody go first. I said, well, I can use my imagination. I'll go first. Held this woman's hands. Uh, Doreen said, imagine your hearts are connecting. Imagine a lot of love surrounding you, kind of like you're in a bubble of love. And she says, invent a person. Just have a person, you know, invent them in your imagination. Tell your partner the story, who they are, maybe what they died of. So I said, well, that's easy. So I invented a fisherman around my partner. His name was Jan. He was uh, in Denmark. He died of lung cancer. He was this woman's um, grandfather on the mom's side. And, of course, there was this profound message that came out of my mouth that she was to deliver to her mom. And so... I opened my eyes, Michael, like, okay, your turn. And the woman's crying. Yeah. Her grandfather's name was Jan. He was a fisherman in Denmark, died of lung cancer. Every detail correct. That message was something she had longed to hear before her dad had passed away. Yeah. And I get goosebumps even telling you the story sure. now because for the mind that doesn't believe it, how in the world did that come out of my mouth? Yeah. And that just started me on, if that's possible, what else is possible? Sure. There are no no so question the about whole, it. Yeah. Yeah. So but I, I, I mean, think that's I, the most important word, possibility. Mm-hmm. Sandra, the right. world is open to possibility. And the moment you close yourself off to something, there's an element of the world that you're supposed to see, feel, experience that you won't do it the minute you close off. And you close off only because of fear. Fear of not what you'll find out, what somebody's going to think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the list goes on. Oh, fear of looking bad? That's why, I mean, it... I found this all out um, back in 2005, and now it's 2013, and I finally have my book come out. It was all fear-based, not wanting people to think I'm weird, strange, and it was actually, you brought up uh, grief in the beginning, it was because of the death of my dad Hmm. back in 2010 that I I became a, I don't want to say a monster, But I'm normally this happy-go-lucky person. I love people. I love to make a difference. And I became so sad, so angry, so bitter, so depressed. And not only that, but the relationships that I had with my siblings, we were always close, started to crumble. Somehow I got labeled as the greedy sister. And so I'm I'm grieving the loss of my dad. My siblings and I are fighting. And some light bulb went off that just told me, this is not you. Maybe this is what grief is. And I started digging, just like I dug for proof of life after death. What the heck is grief? Why does it hurt so bad? Why would families come apart? And I found uh, different things that happen within the brain. And we can talk more about this. But basically, all my information, I thought, the world has to know this. You know, I didn't yeah. care about what they'd think anymore. And I created a free audio, put it online, hmm. called How to Survive Grief. And I've got the domain name, survivegrief.com. I said, I'm just going to give this away. It's helped me. Maybe it'll help someone else. Yeah, let, and within a year... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, oh, just, just the final thing. Within a year of my dad's passing, over 3,000 people in 15 countries downloaded it. Doctors and suicide prevention agencies started recommending it. People started emailing me that my words... They understood their deep, dark place. They chose not to kill themselves. 
and they took my tools to get out of grief. And that's at that moment I said, this has to be a book. Yeah, and no, the journey began. Let's look at this in a, just a slightly different dimension. Sure. Your, your, your father's death, and my goodness, nobody wants anybody to die, was he probably no. gave you one of the greatest gifts you could possibly have. And when I say that, maybe the, the monster you were talking about, okay, maybe that's who you were, who you buried inside of you and caused you not to get whatever you were looking for in life and ca- caused you not to be whoever you are. When the death happened, it brought all that stuff up that was buried inside. And then you, once you finally got it out to look at it, you could do something about it. Because if you can't bring it up to see it, you're stuck with it. I believe that that's true. And with out of my biggest pain and suffering came the biggest gift that I've meant to give for others. And I think we all have that. Yeah. And if we're able to, instead of being a victim of what's happened to us, look at it as empowerment for who we're meant to be. Great gifts. And use it to make a difference for others. Yeah, great gifts. And I think the biggest problem is we don't recognize it as a gift. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's hard. And I, I think as human beings, we're not meant to. I think we are these divine beings. And maybe part of the agreement with God or the universe is for, for us to forget who we really are. Because we need to learn, we need to grow, we need to practice forgiveness. We need to have this wide range of emotions and feelings and use all of our senses. And I think if we truly remembered 24-7 that we're these divine creatures that, well, you know, we, we wouldn't, um, no, I don't know, we would live a different kind of life. Oh, so absolutely. We, we, we wouldn't be perfect. concerned of the little things that were bothering us. And then, you know, when you really come down to it, the forgiveness, there's nobody out there to forgive. If somebody walked up and slapped you in the face or made fun of you, that's only you. And when I say it's you, mm-hmm. we do nothing more than project life as a big mirror. And the forgiveness right. starts with yourself. It, most people think they need permission to do something. And they look for the, well, actually you do, but they look for the permission from outside of themselves. They're looking for it from someone else. You can't do that. You have to give yourself permission to forgive yourself for whatever that reason is. Because if I, how am I going to forgive you if I don't, if it's stuck in me? Yeah. And there's no right or wrong way to do life. I, I believe we don't die. And I know from my investigations that there's three main fears that all of us humans share. And that's the fear of death the fear of failure, and the fear of being alone. And so with my message, my book, and other people are sharing it, you know, to really believe that these we are these eternal beings, and our life is on purpose to learn, to be educated, to forgive, to love, all of it, we can never really fail. Our loved ones um, are still around, and I'd love to tell you where I think they are uh, in a minute, And we also, we don't die. So to live a life at the very end of our lives, to look back and say, I don't have any regrets. I said everything I need to say. And to be able to leave life proud of what you've accomplished, close your eyes, open it up in the hereafter, you know, greeted with your uh, loved ones and your pets and and all that. I mean, that's the gift. That's how I want people to live. I want people to live a great life. Okay, we we only have one thing we could debate about, okay? And it was the, oh, no, seriously, you know, when you said there are three things people are afraid of? Now, if you were brought up in the world that I was brought up in, okay, where John Wayne is still my hero and so is the Fonz, all right? Three things that we're afraid of thinning hair, looking older, and losing your cool. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) You're funny. That's all that looking bad that our, we, we have, I call it in the book, the voice. Yes. And I think everybody can agree when we quiet our minds or try to, there's this little voice that says we're too fat. Nobody's going to love us. Don't take that chance. You're never going to win. Uh, that person certainly doesn't like you. Um, you know, and it, it prevents, and that's where all the fear is. And yeah. so that little voice inside of us is the one that doesn't want to look bad, doesn't want to take chances. But when we can quiet it and know that that's part of our humanity, but it's not the truth what it's speaking. And take action anyway. That's the recipe for having our dreams come true and having great results in our life. No, we're starting to run out of time, but there's one more word to take a look at that okay. is as powerful as fear, and the word is guilt. Guilt, mm. thinking you're responsible for what somebody else feels, does whatever the case may be. Right. That word in and of itself is enough to put people in the closet will they never come back out again. Oh, Absolutely. And then we run into a second problem is 
the habit of thinking guilty thoughts is just like building the habit of brushing your teeth. The more times you think it, the more times it's automatically going to be thought. So to be able to catch ourselves in the thought that guilt, okay, there I am, you know, and we can actually take the moment, identify it, and choose to think something else. Yeah. All right, we're out of time. Do you have a website we can find you in the book at? Well, sure. Well, we have the website, sandrachamplain.com. That is all about me and my message and some fun videos. And if people are interested in learning more of the book, reading some of the reviews, we don't die book.com is that website. Love every second of it. Okay. I, by the way, thank you so much for being on the show. The only question I have for you is who's Uncle Bill? And I'll leave you with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, by the way, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for the difference that you make in so many people's lives, too, thank Michael. You. I enjoy your show. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>